Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday's Daily Devotion. 
Um, we're going to have a devotion this morning from Yvonne Argyle, but I'd like to start with a scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, verses 8 and 9, where Paul writes this, He will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Some other translations translate that uh, word in verse 9, that saying God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his Son. Some other translations translate it has called you into partnership with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and both are equally valid. Jesus wants to have fellowship with us and he has called us to have fellowship with him. But also he has made us joint heirs with him. We are his partners in inheriting the kingdom of God. How wonderful. So we have Yvonne Argyle this morning who's going to bring a thought for today. Good morning. Recently I've been playing the song Audience of One and it reminded me of a story I once heard about a young concert pianist making his debut. The music hall was packed and when he finished playing, the crowd went wild, clapping and cheering. He looked up at the balcony, dropped his head and walked off stage. The stage manager went after him and said, go back, go back. They're all still clapping, but he wouldn't go back. They're not all cheering, he said. And he pointed the stage manager to the balcony where an old man sat, his hands clasping the top of a walking stick. Go back, said the stage manager. What's one old man? You don't understand, said the young pianist. That old man is my teacher. And the point is, it doesn't matter what the world might say. How loudly it cheers or applauds. We need to keep our eyes on the balcony, on the teacher, on Jesus. It doesn't matter what others say, good or bad whether they applaud or criticise, it's his approval that's important. And that got me thinking about what Jesus is looking for, what he applauds or commends. And I started off thinking about worship and then love and then service. And I ended up thinking that, in fact, they're all linked. They're kind of one and the same. We know that faith pleases him, the Bible tells us that, but I, I want to look at a couple of incidents in scripture that I think give us a glimpse of something else that pleases him, although I may only have time for one. There's a lovely story in Mark 14. Let me read some of it. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Picture the scene. I assume the guests are mainly men. She walks past them, through the gathering, to get to Jesus, unaware of or oblivious to the fact that the conversation had probably momentarily stopped. Oblivious to the looks, probably some cast towards Simon, kind of saying, what are you going to do about this woman? Oblivious to the thoughts and the mutterings, and she goes to Jesus. Another similar incident in Luke 7 describes a, a sinful woman. A similar scene says a sinful woman, usually a euphemism for a prostitute. 
and that woman probably walked past men she'd slept with. Men who'd used her and abused her, but never loved her. And she made for Jesus, the one she knew loved her. Each of those women wanted to express their love, their gratitude, their adoration. So took the most precious thing they had and without inhibition, fear of others, and poured it on Jesus, lost in wonder, love and praise. There is criticism, but nothing distracted them from that one. That woman's reckless extravagance aroused a storm of disapproval, but against the criticism, Jesus defended her. Leave her alone. She has done a good thing. She has done something beautiful for me. She has done what she could. And I guess that's what service really is, doing something for or on Jesus, a life poured out on him, simply worship, pouring out her life in love and gratitude. She was concentrated on him, only interested in him, nobody else. She did what she could, all that she could, holding nothing back of herself or the ointment. She was focused on him, not on others or the situation, and it pleased Jesus. She had his approval. I let you into a secret. Those few words, she has done what she could, were a big challenge to me some years back. Had I done what I could, do I do what I could? They're probably responsible for my trying to do some of these devotionals recently, but they were also an encouragement in that Jesus didn't seem to expect anything more, didn't seem to expect what she couldn't do. She had done what she could. That was enough. I pass that challenge on to you. Have you done what you could? Do you do what you could do? Maybe you hold back thinking, oh, mm, it's not much, not much I can do or offer. What you can do or give may seem strange, may seem not useful, it may seem a waste, like this woman. Others may be judge and jury, but it doesn't matter. Jesus was pleased. And if you hold back, you deny him, you deprive him of something that he values and appreciates. Maybe you've never given your all. Maybe you're holding back for some time in the future, when you're older, when you have more time, when the children are at school, when they've left home, when you're retired, when life is less busy, when life is different. But don't leave it. Look what Jesus said to her, said to them. She has anointed my body for burial. If she hadn't done it then, she might have been too late. On the resurrection morning, three women came with ointment to anoint the body of Jesus, but the body had gone. They were too late. We can waste our lives worrying what others think or what others are going to do. We need to make sure we do what Jesus wants, what will please him, what he will applaud. When that seems difficult, Let's remember what he has done for us. He set his face steadfastly towards Jerusalem. He suffered the criticism, the ridicule, the rejection. He was misinterpreted, misjudged. He died an ignominious death. Let's not hold back in our worship, our love, our lives. I haven't got time to do the second one that I was going to, but I hope this has encouraged you this morning. God bless. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart. Speak what is true. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak
speak what is true Cause I am found And I am yours And I am loved I'm made pure And I have life And I can breathe And I am healed I am free my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true, cause I am found, I am yours. I am lost, I am made pure, and I have life, I can breathe, and I am healed, and I am free, cause you are strong, you are sure, you are
let's uh, spend some time praying, shall we? Father God, I thank you for uh, that reminder of how this woman came and anointed you, Lord Jesus, how she did what she could, how she has been recorded in scripture and remembered ever since for her act of love and devotion to you. And Father, I pray that uh, we would learn and take to heart from the attitude of this woman who came to Jesus. Lord, I pray that if there are things that have been holding us back, that if we've been worried what others might think if we become too sold out for Jesus, if we've been distracted by, uh, by work or by circumstances, Lord, I pray that you would speak into our hearts and that we would become people who do what we can, who give ourselves fully and wholly and wholeheartedly to you. God, I want to pray against those feelings of condemnation sometimes that we can't do what others do, that maybe we can't sing as beautifully as the singers we've just heard. Maybe we can't stand up in front of a group of people and speak confidently. But Lord, I thank you that you don't judge us by uh, other people. And I pray that you would help us not to judge ourselves by the gifts that other people have, but that we would recognise the gifts that you have placed in each one of us and that we would do what we can in worship and service and love for you. Lord, you love us so much, so much, Lord. Your love is amazing. I pray, God, help us to express our love for you fully. Father, I want to pray this morning for uh, the hugs in mugs that is going on in uh, Grosvenor Church in Barnstable uh, as, <coughs> as we having this devotion. Thank you for all those who've asked for these uh, mugs and their contents uh, and intending to give them to friends and to neighbours. And Lord, I pray for each one of these mugs. I believe that there's about a 100 or more going out this morning. I pray that each one of these mugs would be a living demonstration of your love for the person who receives them. Lord, I pray for those who are going to receive these mugs over the coming days. Lord, that there would be something special about these mugs and their contents and that you would touch people's hearts with your love and open people's hearts to you. God, I do pray, I dare to pray that we would see a harvest, that we would see people give their lives to you and fall in love with you forever. Triggered off by receiving one of these hugs in mugs this morning. And Lord, as we approach Easter time next weekend, uh, Lord, we, we are, as you know, we are restricted because of the pandemic. But Father, I pray that the services that we have, the activities that are going on, would be um, marvellous demonstrations of your love for each and every human being. And Jesus, I pray that people would become Christians in Barnstable in North Devon this Easter time through the activities of your people this Easter time, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your death and resurrection. Lord, we know that the harvest is plentiful. Lord God, we commit to you the efforts that, that we're involved with. And we pray, Lord, that we would be involved in reaping in a harvest. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for this time in your presence this morning. And praise you, Lord, that you want us to show our love for you. Release us to be wholehearted, even reckless in our love for you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, it's really blessed me. I hope it's blessed you as well. We will be back on Monday. Um, next week will be our last week of daily devotions and we're only going to run the Monday through to Thursday. Uh, and on Friday next week at 10.30, we're going to have uh, a Grosvenor Church All Sites communion service online 10.30 next Friday. We'll tell you a bit more about that next week, but we will have our normal devotions Monday to Thursday and then we will be uh, stopping the daily devotions for the time being. So look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great weekend and a wonderful day. Bye.